Division 1, Division 2, Division 3, League 1, Championship, League 1, League 2, Conference Premiership, League 2, League 1, Championship, Premier League. What I have just gone through is the last 27 years for Luton Town. The only team in English football history to go from the top flight down out of the Football League to the Conference and then straight back up again to the top flight. The story of Luton Town I'm sure is one that you've heard a hundred times. However, this is a football channel and I do video essays on football clubs and footballers. So it would be a disservice to not do a video delving into the world of Luton Town. Of course, if you've been hiding underneath a rock the size of the moon, Luton Town have been promoted to the Premier League after beating Coventry City on penalties in the playoff final. This was for me the greatest playoff final in many, many years, well, championship playoff finals, because simply put, the achievements by both Coventry and Luton Town were incredible and either of these two going up would have been a fairy tale however if you have to pick which one is more impressive than the other you may say that Luton Town would have been the fairy tale of all fairy tales for me only Leicester City winning the Premier League is a greater achievement than what Luton Town have experienced in the last two three decades but first things first tell me down below your thoughts on Luton Town and most importantly where do you think they will come in the Premier League next year I guarantee everyone will say that they are guaranteed to be bottom 20th place and could even give Derby County a run for their money for the lowest ever points total. I'm sure you're going to hear that a lot by a lot of people, but you know what? I will back them and I will tell you why later on in this video. So tell me your thoughts down below, smash the like button, let's try to hit 3,000 likes and also, of course, subscribe if you're new. We are becoming one of the fastest growing football YouTube channels in the space right now, so please do hit that subscribe button because it does go a long way. And of course, my company, Mozilla Designs, links down below. I won't promote it too much, but thank you for the love and Let's get straight into it. Do you know this is Luton Town's away end? Yes, I'm sure you do, because you've seen this a thousand times, and you're going to see it another thousand times in the next week. The amount of storylines that have been created because of this one event it is insane. I mean, let me just list them for you. For example, their manager, Rob Edwards, was the manager of Watford before the season started. And if you don't know, Luton Town and Watford are fierce rivals. So... Rob Edwards got sacked by Watford 10 games into the season when he was signed to become their long-term manager because Watford are known for sacking managers 18 times a season. And of course, he got sacked 10 games into a season. And guess what? He then went over to Luton Town and took Luton Town, their fierce rivals, to the Premier League, which is hilarious in itself and is probably the most peak championship thing I've ever seen to ever championship. Or how about this, a story of Peli Ruddock and Panzu, who is the first player in history to go from non-league to the Premier League with the same club, playing for Luton Town in the Conference, League 2, League 1, Championship, and of course, as long as he stays at Luton Town and does play at least one minute, he will also play in the Premier League 2 with the same club. How about the stadium? Well, there's a lot to be said about that. To be a Premier League stadium, you've got to match certain requirements, and Luton Town Stadium, Kenilworth Road, or the Kenny, is not suitable for Premier League requirements. Spending about £10 million to improve their facilities to be ready to be playing for the Premier League. Of a capacity of around 10,500 and the actual stadium is located literally on a street, like the away end. Again, you've seen it a thousand times, but the away end you do literally walk next to someone's back garden, or at least you look into their back garden. It, it, it's insane, but I love it. It's so beautiful English heritage. You can go from Tottenham Hotspur Stadium to the next game going to go play at the Kenny. It's just remarkable, and that is the dream and the, the fairy tales that you want there to have in English football. Because don't forget, not too long ago, two years ago, I think, is the European Super League. That all came up, and if that took place, then this would never have happened. The story Story of Luton Town going to play in the Premier League, playing against United, Liverpool, Arsenal, City, Chelsea, Spurs, playing against the staples of not just English but world football is remarkable and that is the beauty of the beautiful game and what we have in England. And the renovations has already took place a day after they won the playoff final with new floodlights already being implemented into the stadium, more space for the broadcasters for all the cameras because they don't literally have that right now and their bobber stand 
effectively need to be rebuilt. So how have they done it? Because a lot of people may be really confused. I mean, most people, despite them being in the playoffs last year, would have probably predicted them to be like 17th, 15th, maybe in the top half, but I don't think many thought they'd be back in the playoffs. The man behind all of this is a man called David Wilkinson. Luton Town first hit administration back in the 2004 season. As in 2007, it hit administration for the third time. A fire sale was took place on the club pretty much. And due to them not selling any players because they were in admin, they were just left to rot. And things somehow got even worse. With relegation to League 2 confirmed in the 08 09 season, they were given a minus 20 point deduction. This was due to the owners failing to agree to a CVA, like the company voluntary agreement if you want to look that up. And somehow, things got even worse, as the club was still being investigated by the Football League, and due to their previous past administrations, means that the minus 20 points was just seen as not good enough, really, and thought, you know what? How about a minus 30? So in the 08 09 season, Luton Town had only six pro players in the entire club, and facing back-to-back-to-back -back -back relegations. Somehow, in typical Luton Town fashion, despite being relegated 15 points below the drop, which of course, without their minus 30 points, they would have been able to actually stay up. They actually brought some silverware to the club and victory at Wembley, beating Scunthorpe United 3-2 with 42,000 Luton Town fans in attendance, which is remarkable considering their situation at the time. Winning the Johnstone's Paint Trophy. Then came the time in the conference with many playoff heartaches. Their first season, they finished second behind champion Stevenage and they lost in the playoff semi-finals to York City. The next season, 2010-11, they finished third place and in another playoff, unfortunately losing to AFC Wimbledon in the playoff final. Final. In the 2011-12 season, they made back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back playoffs. They made another playoff final, and third time lucky? Sadly not. 30,000 Luton Town fans were at Wembley yet again, and Andre Gray putting them 1-0 ahead early on in the game. Only two minutes in, but unfortunately, it did not work out their way, and yet again, York City were the ones to cause them pain, losing 2-1 in the final and Luton Town having to go all over again. In the 2012-13 season, they missed out on the playoffs, but they did have some joy along the way, reaching the third round of the FA Cup and with a home tie against Wolverhampton Wanderers, a goal by Alex Lawless sealed a 1-0 win against Wolverhampton Wanderers. And it did not end there, as in the fourth round, they faced Premier League Norwich City. And on that day, they went on to make history. With 10 minutes to go, substitute Scott Rendell won the tie tie for Luton Town, beating Norwich 1-0 and becoming the first non-league side in history to beat a Premier League team. And what came up next was two of the best managerial appointments in the club's history, up till, well, Rob Edwards. After finishing 7th place in the non-league conference season, they appointed John Steele. And in his first season in charge, he became a Luton Town hero. Not only winning the league, but winning it by 101 points, scoring 102 goals. They were finally back into the Football League. One massive step in the right direction, but still a long way to go. After spending five years in non-league, they are finally out of the conference, which is an incredibly tough league to get out of. Of course, if you've seen what's happened with Wrexham and Notts County this year. Four seasons, Luton Town would see, with the first year in a remarkable 8th place, John Still was replaced by the second great manager in Nathan Jones. Nathan Jones, of course, you may have seen him at Southampton and became a bit of a meme, but at Luton Town, that is where he made a name for himself and in remarkable fashion too. In his first full season, he finished a remarkable 4th place, brutally being knocked out of the playoffs by Blackpool. Nathan Jones implemented a diamond formation, which in these divisions was quite rare and is hard to get right and they did it very well. As during the 2017-18 season, they put eight past Yeovil, seven past Stevenage and Cambridge, and five past Swindon. And it got promoted in this season in second place with Accrington Stanley winning the title. And remarkably, despite them taking four years to get into League One, it only took them one year to get out of it. Not by going up for the playoffs, or even second, but by winning the entire division. However, Nathan Jones was not the man to take them up at the end of it, as he departed for Stork City in January, and club constant Mick Harford took the job to the end of the campaign. Luton Town were in the Championship and felt like that was more where they belong. And four years they spent in the Championship and continuously got better and better each year, with a 19th place, 12th place, 6th place, and of course, 3rd place finish. And that is where it takes to where we are today. Nathan Jones did go back to Luton Town, but of course, left to go and take the Southampton job, and then 
then came in the man Rob Edwards at the perfect time. As you said earlier, just got sacked by Watford and was seen as a bit of a risky move considering the fact that Watford were at the time seen as a more exciting club with their previous Premier League experience and also power shoot money. Robert Edwards doing a fantastic job at Forest Green getting them promoted as well. It seemed like a risk but one that was worth taking and he did take it very well. Continuing the upwards trajectory and long behold Luton Town came third in the championship and that is where we end up to today with them now being promoted to the Premier League. That is the story of Luton Town and of course there's so many more details across the way but just that alone is remarkable to see a club gone from playing from the conference to the Premier League. I don't think we may see that ever again because money is becoming much more and money is a problem. They, it, it's not like they've got took over by a wealthy businessman. It is just remarkable recruitment and a great manager as well. Many people may point out their play style and that is one big talking point and as a Burnley fan I get told this a lot with Burnley saying that you're a direct long ball team, very physical and you try to hit teams on set pieces and rely on your home form to stay up and I've heard that all before and Luton Town will be no different if not much worse in terms of those accusations. It is no lie to say that Luton Town are not a very direct team but they got to play to their strengths. It is not like they're spending a remarkable amount of money in this season alone. They spent about two three million pounds and this is just after them being in the playoffs so being in the playoffs and only spending £2 million straight after is quite poor when you think about it, but they make it work with great recruitment. The year beforehand, how much did he spend on fees? Nothing. They spent zero. Literally zero. Signing players with the right personalities, with the right work effort to join the team. And as I've heard a quote many times, which I'll keep using, is that money buys you players, but it doesn't buy you a team. And that is exactly what Luton Town have. They don't have the fanciest names. More so, you probably can't even name me five players of their main 11. But that is the beauty of it. And the most important thing is that it is a great example of teams that are in the Championship or League One to show that even with money and parachute payments becoming so important, becoming so powerful now, it is still possible. And Coventry City and Luton Town are both great shining examples of that it is still possible to get promoted without powership money and without massive ownership. It is still possible if your club is run correct and that is how it should be. And it gives me hope. So when I see people mock Luton Town and say that they're going straight back down with record lots points totals, I, I like to go the other way and I like to back them. That's why I'm going to back Luton Town the entire way to stay up next year. Even as a Burnley fan, that is also in the same league. I think that will stay up as well. I personally don't think that Burnley will even be close to going down, but I can leave that for another video. What I see with Luton Town is a team which is completely different to really any other team in that division. Sheffield United does have a physical edge but not to the same level of Luton Town. For me personally I think that the home form alone can really give them a good chance. We all know how important home form can be especially for newly promoted sides in the Premier League and I think for them it would be the main thing that can keep them up. Kenilworth Road is something that many teams probably haven't experienced. The atmosphere will be wild next year and I think that that would be a very key aspect for them. Their play style is also very unique compared to most Premier League teams and I think for some teams they may find it a bit awkward to face in the first game or two. I mean no one thought that Bournemouth would stay up even with the fact they did have experience and they stayed up. No one thought that that Huddersfield Town would stay up and they did. So if Huddersfield Town can, why can't Luton? And I'll be backing them to stay up next year. As long as you don't send us down as well, which I don't think would be a problem. Tell me your thoughts down below on Luton Town, their story, and also how do you think they'll do in the Premier League. And of course, like the video and also smash a like if you're new. It does mean a lot and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.